Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the what is the fourth episode in a four-part series. So, for all those clever ones out there, uh, this is the last one. Okay, so we are going to fit the stairs today. Um, so we're going to show as much as we can with regards of uh, putting the null posts on, putting the rises in, putting the kites on the bottom, fitting the bottom null post, that kind of thing. However, I'll show you in a minute, or you sh if you've already seen the other three episodes, um, it is tight. If you haven't seen the three episodes, then what's happening? Come on, do us a favour and watch the videos. Go back to the first one, it's on the screen now, and that shows us uh, knocking out the original landing and floor to then reset it all. So there we are, It's we think it's a good one. Have a look. Right now, this um, property has turned out to be a bit of a small renovation, if you like, that we are now involved in. I only come to do the stairs, and then I've ended up doing this. So this is the plasterboard wall that uh, myself and Matt put in. Let me come back a little bit so you can see. We've done all this here. And then Matt has now plastered all of this in here. And if you haven't seen again, if you haven't seen the first one, this used to be um, a bedroom and that used to kick out that way like that. And then you used to walk into a bit of a cupboard above the stairs there. But of course, because of the headroom now, because you've moved the stairs a metre that way, we've now put this wall back in. This is now going to be like a fourth bedroom come office. I've put these frames in, these frames here. I didn't film none of this because we've done this kind of thing on the channel before. He's plastered all of this one. And he's plastered all of this one. Matt is here today doing um, a little pre a prep work downstairs. But as you can see, he's already started insulating this. Now we haven't done this stud work and pocket door. Likewise, we haven't done that wall there, but we have boarded and insulated it. And it's just acoustic really, just a bit of sound deadening for the customer. So there we are. So let's have a look now at what we're gonna do today with regarding fitting the stairs. Right then, so what we're gonna do, start setting out the stairs. We have got our stairs from Stairbox again. I delivered this yesterday. So all my parts are here. My parts are here to put together to form this new staircase for them. So, uh, should we crack on? Matt's just give me a hand to uh, get this up while he's, uh, he's doing what he's got to do. All I've got to do now, I've got to set the null post at the top, which we'll have a look up there in a minute. Uh, and how I'm going to do that. But in essence, the back of your knoll has to be cut around that trimmer. It goes, so it sits on your trimmer, comes round and back in again. Uh, and I'll allow 15 mil then, cut out the knoll as well, to slot the, uh, the plasterboard into on the underside. All I've done then is, if I just quickly show you, if you look, I've got, that's my, the finished, um, riser there the last one which will go up this face here get this off in shot so that's one two three four five six seven seven rises down to the down to this point and my rises are 208 so what i've done is i've then leveled myself i'll explain myself what i'm talking about in a minute i've leveled from here from the top of the trimmer there this is going to come off in a minute to set the stairs onto they'll cut this back in other than I was in about what I talked about last episode. Leveled across here, put myself a level line, which is there, excuse your shadow, trying to get as better light, much light for you as I can. Then I've measured down, seven times 208 is 1456. So that is the top of this. And what this will do, this will enable me to, when I turn these stairs round, it'll sit on the underside of that last um, straight, rise if you like before it comes around to the kites sit onto there and allow me then to mess about with a post that goes here which is this one oh no that's a piece of i was going to say god that's dirty it's not in the box yet that's this one here this big one this big null post and that's the one that goes um that housing there will more than likely be going onto can you see it up there that one there, where the dowels are, see? That'll clip onto there. And sit in here at this point. Give me the structure for the, to carry the, the kites and the, the straight, one straight flight there. Straight and then three kites. Take us around the corner and hold it all together. And ultimately as well, give us our null post that when we walk up the stairs, 
we've got a null post at the bottom. Null post at the top to put your handrail on. That's what that's for. So I'll get all this um, null post chopped out. I'll see you in a bit of a time lapse if you want while I do it. How's that? Stick it in temporary. I'll give Matt another shout. I'm to stop Matt again. He's going to get enough fed up with me today. And then we will slide it into place, sit it on our temporary packer, which will eventually become a full stud work anyway, because I may as well, because I'm going to put some draw, pull out drawers for shoes under the stairs as well later on. So I can do a full stud there to support this staircase, as well as bolted concrete fixed to the, to the wall there. Uh, and then we can we can stuck us out, start setting it all out and start putting this this bottom bit in. So we'll do that now, and then I'll explain where we are in a minute. show you again so first of all i've set my saw to the depth of that <coughs> excuse me this is the last nosing little bit of nose that goes level with your floor i'll show you in a minute what i mean because it's a little bit tight on there so I'm, I'm struggling a little bit to try and get some good footage for you but the last riser that goes against my trimmer sits into there it's about the same thickness as my finger so i'm cutting all of this bit out and then this chunk i'm taking out then sits try and get this as best I can if you can see the trimmer there I've just my first cut is the is the top of the trimmer so I'm trying to do overhand top of the trimmer there and then my last cut I've measured down to here and allowed 15 mil which is board and skim to go in and clip to the underside of the null post the null post is going on this other side because this bits against the wall and then what I'll do is I'll take, like I've just said, I'll also take this little bit up. I haven't glued this yet to allow myself to um, sit this part. If you see this part there, look, this is the underside of the floor. So that's where the trimmer sits in there, look. And that's where the last bit of nosing goes in and your flooring sort of comes up to this point. I don't want to take any more out of this. So I'll cut my flooring up to this. Plus what I like to do is trim it in. Leave it a little bit short, fill it full of glue so it doesn't squeak. When this null post goes on, if I stand up, this null post will go on like that. That bit will slide onto the trimmer, so it'll sort of sit. Let me come back. So that there now is the that point there is the floor. As you can see, I've cut, I've left my line in there, so I've come below my line. So that now is the exact same point that cut there is the exact same as that one along there. Let me just come back again. And then the depth of that is so the trimmer sits, when the last riser goes on like that, fits into there, <coughs> screwed into this. And then that then, where to the right hand side of my square there is where the trimmer sits. Again, I'll try and show, but because it's so tight, I'm having to try and explain this way rather than once it's in because it is tight in that gap it's not like um we've got loads of room in it to view it so i'll cut this out now all the way through so that sits in so we can sit this last riser against the trimmer that's the first job rise onto there it comes flush with this uh, and then this is where the trimmer sits against the back of the riser and on 
onto your nail. This then hooks onto the top of your trimmer. And as I said, what happens then is if I just get a piece of plasterboard, I'll show you. Smashing the place up. So the trim out will sit there, the tin back like that, and then when I do the ceiling on the underside of this landing, that will be able to slot into there like that, and then obviously that can be plastered around on the underside there. So that's the plan. Um, all I'll do now is I'll set it for my draw downing. Uh, if you don't know what that is, um, it just basically is offsetting the holes on this one and in the main stringer to when you knock the dowels in, it just pulls it in tight to the shoulders. That's what draw down is. Um, I set myself up for that, uh, and then as soon as Matt's got five minutes, which he's probably getting sick of me, he's here somewhere, I'll shout him in it. Matt! Um, we can uh, then get this dry fitted, turn it round as tight as it is, and then drop it into the hole to make sure this all sits nice, and then sits nice on our prop. And once that's done, we can start setting all this up, fixing this in, getting this to ourselves, get ready to fix in, sorry, and then start making up the bottom part, which is the the kites and the uh, the bottom riser and tread and the null post. So we'll get this set, get this fixed and glued, and we'll carry on. So you see me just um, drop the spade bit into the holes, just give it a little tiny tap. I've then marked my um, centres and then just come in a little bit. However, what I sort of forgot, it's been a while since my last one, is Stairbox had already pre-drilled the um, holes there. So when I, I mean, as, as accurate as they are, and as I, I was, I suppose, as soon as I put the uh, spade bit in, it dropped straight into the hole and followed it in. So you can see it's offset. Um, so they've done that for you already, offset, and I just forgot they'd normally do that. And then what happened, you'll knock the dowel through, it'll go through here, and it'll go through the hole I've just done and into the dowel there. The only thing to make sure is before you knock your dowel in all the way, is I tend to do a little bit of a measurement, which is 90 mil and then cut my dowel off at about 80, just to make sure that um, you don't smash the face out the all this side when you're uh, knocking them in. Right then, always best where possible to do a bit of a dry run, especially when you're this tight. Now, if I'd have put the null post on there, we wouldn't have got it round. So what we've done is we've uh, took this off now, took that nosing off. We've had to cut a little bit of a chunk out the, out the floor in there. So it sits in because it's slightly a bit of a belly in the wall. What we're going to do now, we're going to turn this flat, drop it down, sit it onto our prop that I set up earlier. And then I'm going to um, lift it back towards me once it's sat on the floor. So it'll sit on the on these stringers for now on the, on the floor. Put the null post on and then slide it in any position. We'll quickly check it again 
make sure it all slots over the trimmer nicely. Then what we're going to do is pull it back out again. I've got the, uh, the riser and the nosing ready. And I'll glue this, um, all this edge, all this edge, glue this in, glue the nosing in and drop it into position. Sitting on our prop, I'll then get down tentatively on the stairs as Matt holds it in place and then start setting out the bottom. Uh, and then I can let Matt get back to what he needs to get done, Connor Matt. Yes, you can. There we have it, not these in. I did actually mark these, and like I mentioned earlier, so they don't go through. But as it is, I think the mortise that um, has already been pre drilled into this side of the nil post um, isn't as all the way through. So, but when you hit it, you can actually it, you can feel it and you can hear it when it's hitting something solid. So, once you get to that point, just don't do any more, just stop. Um, so, there we are, fully glued. I'll get my saw, I'll cut these off now. And then we'll drop this down and then we'll have a bit of a, a look and make sure we're happy and then I can start fitting um, this nosing which is what goes on your landing and your chip floor and goes up against it and the last riser again plenty glue plenty screws jobs are good one. so let's crack on with that then shall we what do you think Matt crack on that's it then. okay so we've, uh, we're happy now that that is where it is um, there's a little bit of a lump in the wall, but we're going to have a look at that in a minute. Matt's going to try and, I think he's trying to attempt to tap that on so he hasn't got to hold it to make it a bit more comfortable. But what we're going to do now, we're happy that this, <coughs> excuse me, is where it should be. That gap there now is for the, the right last riser. As you can see, I have to take a little bit of the floor there to sit it down. I can put my uh, fixings in here, in here after, but I didn't want to put them in until I was happy. Uh, as you can see there, that cut sits on here, nicely there. What I'm going to do, what well, I haven't done yet, but, oh, what's that? What I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my, uh, my level, little bolt level, because I haven't done this yet. Happy with that, Matt? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, I think we're, I think we're bubble. Oh, are oh, yeah. There's a tiny, if, if I'm going to be really fussy, there's probably, I'm not even a millimetre on that, but I shall get my bigger level anyway, my 600, to go as far as we can. And if needs be, if I've got to put a little one mil packer just there, if that's all it is, then that's wonderful. Um, I'm really pleased with that. Um, how are you looking down there, Matt, with it now that's yeah. sitting on the floor? What are you like this way? Yeah. Just stick it 90 degrees, what's that saying? Which way has it got to go? Down? No, just... Up a touch. Just, I, did, I did make it short. So this is something yeah, that possibly. when you're doing a prop, like I said, I've done seven times the, um, the rise to set my prop at the bottom. I've made it a little bit short because if it's too long, you're stuck. Whereas now what we can do is we can get the, a little bit of a packer before we start fixing this in on top of my prop now, my temporary prop, to get us level. And you do that just by putting your level across here this side and at the at that end as well to check it so that's it we already know that i've set that um height anyway is five to ten mil depending where the the null post sits to allow me to pick it up level anyway so that's all working as it should do the null posts in there sitting on the floor and it's got to come up which we know we now now know in a minute once we pack it up with packers we can see how far it's got to come up and then that's where we are Packer on top of the temporary prop, pack it underneath there, and, and there we are. We'll just start messing with the bottom. Now it's the bottom part that's the awkward part because you've got to try and get your kites in 
they'd be doing awkward space but looking at that i've got about 900 underneath the stairs now to get in underneath on my back and what have you to start putting kites and things in but we'll have a look every bit of a way i think shall we matt i think so um i can let you carry on while i faff um and yeah and um, again <laughs> You can only do it so tight because as you've just seen, we've got to try and get it into place. So I can, I want to pull this in a little tiny bit. I've got to pull it round a little tiny bit at the bottom this way, just to make sure I'm sitting 100% flat on that, even though I think what's that sitting on at the back inside there is the, um, the uh, hanger, I think. So I shall put some sticks like all the way down there to, to bed this riser on now. And what I'll do with this gap once I pull it in, when the null cap goes on and we start putting, once it's skimmed and we put the null cap on and we start putting the skirting into there, I'll get a bit of flat 20 mil round or a bit of scotia or something, a small bit of scotia and put it up there to the underside of the um, null cap. But I think in terms of level, I think you can say that we are pretty level there. I'm happy with that. Absolutely. Right then. We'll get this riser on, get this nosing in, get it all fitted, get these nailed down, and off we go. Shall we, Matt? Right, right. Do, do something, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, you can tell why I'm not singing, that it's in, turn the radio off. Um, all we did that you wouldn't have seen is before this went in, we've got some uh, clear sticks like and completely covered the, um, the face of this trimmer uh, in, in gunk. And the reason, two reasons for that, one, because it's a good, good adhesive, and two, is to stop any of the wood on metal. Um, we don't want that squeak. Um, so what we will do before we finally fix, I'll get another couple of, I'll get this, lift this up a smidge, put a bead under there and sit it back down again onto these um, joist hangers and then I'll put my, my nails in here. Now I haven't put my nails in there, shoot me down for it. 
I'm only going to put them here. I know they're all down the faces anyway, but it's only carrying from there to there. A bit of chipboard. It, it ain't even, it ain't even a metre from there to there. A bit of chipboard. So it's carrying because the trim is separate, remember? That's got the stairs. That's into the walls. So I'm not going to put nails on there because it kicks it up too high on, the, on this. And it makes a bit of a squeaky noise, so I avoid that if possible. So where are we looking for level, Matt? Yeah. Good. Pick this up maybe a mil. Yeah, which is what, what I know. I know it's which, short. Uh, which is the packer. Sorry. Okay, yeah. that's fine. That'll be fine, Matt. Yeah. Okay, lovely. So we'll get this, like I said, I'll lift this up a little bit. I'll put a bit of gunk under there now so that sits and doesn't squeak on this metal. Um, and then we'll put the last nails in here. I'll cut my little bit of chipboard flooring, which is there, back into here. And then we can glue and, uh, and screw that back in place. A bit of a level. Thank you. What we got? A little bit of level there. Can't see that with glasses on. Uh, you know what? No, we're not. We're uh, pretty bang on there. Again, I think maybe if I'm going to be pedantic about it, I don't think it's even, it's even a mill, is it? No, it's not. So, the side again, so I've put some gun gun here and I've screwed this down into the trimmer and I've screwed my, um, I'm going to put some screws uh, again into the, I know it's only thin, but if I just get it right in the centre of my riser, I like to put a couple of screws then into the top of my riser. And what it does then is it splits the MDF in the groove and splays it like that. And therefore the glue, when the glue sets, it all, it's all nice and tight and you don't get a squeaky top step either. So that's what I like to do. You would have seen that I put, I put a screw every 100 mil across into the riser, along with plenty of glue. I glue all surfaces, surfaces, all surfaces, both on here, the riser, and in the null itself. So I glue both areas. Um, 100 mil all the way across. I did three screws up there and up there on the back of the riser, and then put a two inch eight then into the uh, string of that side, into the bottom of the null that side, to clamp the glue, to pull this tight to this again, to try and stop the squeaks. Um, and I haven't had one squeak yet doing this method, so hopefully it works. Um, so we're gonna carry on now. I'll get myself down there. Matt can carry on, because he's probably fed up with me now, taking me away from his job. Um, and then I'll start going down there. We'll move down to there then, and we'll start faffing, and it is gonna be a faff, down there. Okay then, so we've got a bit of a different view now from the bottom. Um, I've had to put, as expected, I've had to put a packer under this prop, because I knew I'd cut it short. It ended up being a three mil packer under there. And we are, if you look at that now, we are cock on for that. If it doesn't look like it on the, the camera, I can assure you we are 100%. And then with this one, with actually, weirdly, with the null post fully on the floor there, we are fully cock on there as well. So I'm happy with that. All I've got to do now is the, uh, the messing around, fixing all this together. I'll glue that, because it is delled, if I show you. I can pull this off. Oh, there we are, it is delled, look. So what I'll do is I'll glue all that together. I shall put that in there. And then what I'll do is, because I haven't got the room here to start twisting to get in to, to, to fix it all, to put the cock, to move it back. I just haven't got the room, I can't. I can't do it. So I'm gonna get under there now. I shall leave this loose for now. I shall try and sort of assemble and get it set and then pull this this into here once it's glued and then I'll put it like I say I'll put a block onto here and then screw it into this one as well as well as the glue as well as the dells and then I can skew screw into here nice tidy screw with a pellet maybe into here into the meat of this to pull it together once I've got myself set here and I can get everything in because luckily I have got a bit of 30 mil wiggle room here to pull this out to allow myself to get the kites in. So again, I'm gonna have a bit of a dry fit first, I think. And when I've got myself set, I'll have another chat with you and tell you what my plan is. Okay, I've done a couple of things off camera. Um, I've put a stud in here, fixed uh, a timber at an angle so it follows the uh, rake of the stringer, glued and screwed it to the wall. And then I've put another timber then up to the um, underside of the last tread on the straight flight before it becomes the first kite and screwed and glued that into there onto a ba and then put a base rail in to there, glued to the floor. And then I put a timber in then off there, again to the underside of there, 
that sort of supports this fully and the null is in addition. The null has all been put in now, all glued and screwed into place. I'll put some um, stick like on the bottom of that as well. Again, so there's no movement and it doesn't squeak. Then what we've done is things to, things to note. You can't see it now because I've put this in, but when you put this in, be mindful, unlike me. I tapped it, waiting for like up there, you know, it goes a bit hard, hard saying, you go, okay, I'm something hard there. It, I thought, oh, this is a bit, it's going all the way in. It come out into this groove, which this has got to go into. So be mindful of that, because once it's in there, you're going to be, you're going to struggle. Luckily, I thought, oh, I know what's happening. Come around and look, and it was. It had gone into this hole here. So knock it in as far as it'll go until it comes to the back of this, this mortise. Um, and then you can still get this in then, because if you don't, you're in trouble. What I've then done is I've glued and screwed this together because I showed you it's got two dowels in here. So I've glued that, pushed it, loads and loads of glue, forced it in there. I've screwed, screwed it into the top there, it can be filled nice. And then what I've done then is to help pull this in, I've put a bracket on, set it back, and then when I've screwed it, it's pulled this, clamped this in like that. So that's got that one all glued now. The glue, glue will hold that, I'm happy with that. Because it can't go anywhere because it's sitting on a shoulder there. It's actually housed in at that point onto here. I've then put this timber in, glued to the wall, screwed and glued to the wall to, um, to carry this. Now, I've left this loose at the minute because we're using the bit of a gap we've got and the fact that this is still loose to get the kites in. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to access this all from this point. Now, we're going we're gonna to work our way down, whether this is the way other people do it, which is the way, whether this is the way people think it should be done. This is the way that I'm doing it and it seems to be working for me. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. This is a nice and tight now. This just needs a bit of a tap and this one, this trail will go in and it'll allow me then to get under here and do glue and glue all the wedges in there, into there and put the glue blocks on the back of the riser, which is great. Gets a bit tighter when it gets down here, but I've got to get under it still. Then what I'm thinking is I'm gonna to have to sort of do this, these last two all in one hit. Even though I can get in to put this one in, I'm gonna to have to sort of glue and wedge this one and leave it loose here, this little um, stringer, wherever it is, somewhere. We've seen that little stringer stairs, somewhere. Bridge, bridge, somewhere. Oh, on the stairs. stairs. Yes, yeah, so I think what I'm gonna have to do is put this in as a separate, onto there like that, and glue this first, and then sort of pull this round then to suit this one, put this one in, and wedge this one from underneath. That's the only way I can sort of see me doing it, unless I do this one first, and pull this one round to suit this one. I don't know. I'm gonna have to have a bit of a think about that. I'm just gonna to have to play it by ear. As you can see, I've put my skew, a skew screw in there ready. So as soon as I've finished moving this backwards and forwards to allow me to get this, these kites in, because all I have to go into this, these corners you see, and it's, it's difficult when it's all set square. This is a, against a wall, you'd struggle. And I have struggled in the past. So if you can give yourself 40 mil when you're measuring your stairs, then do so, because it's easier. So once that's done, pull in or out, get it all nice and square. I can then put a skew, a skew screw then up into that to hold that. And all that at the back of that will be foamed, packed, and uh, concrete screwed all the way up under, under every tread. This one, unfortunately, is gonna have to be fixed. I could, in fact, I could go under there. I could go under there on these two, maybe. Uh, but this one, I'm gonna struggle, so I'll probably have to do it face on the top, put a pellet in there and pellet that, pellet the bottom one, maybe, because you're gonna see those just to fix that to the wall. But really, if, as long as I can do there, and there, that just stops a bounce, and this is self-supporting anyway, because this is a lot stronger. So that's what we're gonna have to do now. Now you're gonna have to sort of forgive the footage from this point, because it is really tight. As you can sort of see, we're all a bit tight here now to get cameras and things in, so I'll show you as much as I can. I may even get Matt, because Matt's just about finished what he gotta do. He thought he was on an earlier day today, but, but he said he's gonna help me instead. Um, so he may, I may get Matt, if he can, just to come round with the camera, just to try and show you what we're doing. Maybe get under there just to show you what we're doing. Um, if not, you're just going to see nothing. So what do you think of that idea? Nice and tight under there with two of us. I'll be okay, oh, Matthew. Oh, 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 I've oh, known you oh, for a long time now, Matthew, so it's okay. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> right then, let's crack on with it then.
Just thought we'd stop there and try and explain what we're doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's tight. I've had to take a little bit. What I've ended up doing is, when you fit these, th there's always the same issue when you've got kites, that these, um, these rides have got to be a certain length to allow you to get them in, but if you, to them to work so you can screw them, but if you cut them too short to get them in the holes, then obviously they're not going to work properly. You're going to have gaps. So you may have seen me get this in then faff. But all I basically did was I got my little planer out. I fortified that off, even though it's not 45. 45, oh, get myself in shot. 45 that off there to get it in tighter this way. Took the back end off it as well to make it smaller and got my knife down there. Did that. And then I'll show you in a minute. We've got all the wedges in and all screwed. Likewise in here, loads of glue. It's everywhere, I'm covered in it. But loads and loads of glue everywhere. Um, in all the orifices. Is. And then loads of screws and, and wedges. And then what I've done is where the... If I just show around this way. Where I've got things like the wedge there, just an angle. I've just gunked in the corner with uh, sticks like... See all the wedges in there, look. You can see there. You can see, for example, on this one here. I'll get my head out the way. I've put screws straight through into, into the null for this riser and then put loads of sticks like on it. Likewise, I should do it on here in a minute. Now I've screwed that one. Loads of screws all the way across there. Loads of screws. And then before I finish, I've just got to put the glue blocks in here as well, which is to mimic these ones that the uh, manufacturer fits prior to, uh, prior to delivery. So I'll get those on and they just assist with any movement on here then as well. And again, I'll probably just use some sticks like on that because I know it's not going to drop off. Uh, and then, like I say, just go ahead then, likewise there, I've just put that at an, cause it's at an angle, wedged it in tight, and then filled that gap there that you can just see between the back of the rise and the wedge. I've um, put loads of uh, sticks like in there as well. Now that's done, I can put that screw into that stringer. What myself and Matt just did was go up the stairs and eyed this stringer through to make sure that we weren't pushing that over because we've had to try and put, manipulate this this way and that way to get these in. It's a, I'd like to think it's a bit more comfortable now, um, but we've just put a little tiny wedge in there just to make sure that's where we should be now. And there's a, actually a lovely gap all other than the middle, there's a bit of a belly in the middle. So that's nice for us to foam and put packers in from underneath, concrete screw to that wall, which we'll do before we go. So we'll go ahead now and put this, this last one in. Um, I don't think I'll time lapse this because I'm struggling a little bit now because I'm going to get closer and closer to where I can put the tripod because that room's full of stuff. So I'm getting a bit tighter. Um, so I might just do this now, get myself under there and film it at the end. And um, then hopefully we'll all be good to go. And I'll talk about then, about fixing and finishing the stud work off here. And I'll then discuss with you what we plan to do next at this property. And... What will be then a little mini series coming up, won't it, Matt? I hope so. A little mini series of what we've got left to do. There's a fair bit to do here, including fitting kitchens and, and pull out drawers under under here and pantries and, and media walls in there. And there's quite a lot going on. So um, that'll be a little mini series to start soon, hopefully. But we'll crack on with this and we'll see where we are in a minute. this for 18 months or whatever long we've been doing this for i found now if you press the red button to record that's what happens if you don't press it it doesn't record anything so as you can see we finished this now uh, this is all in this has all been glued i didn't press record Matthew. um we put this on normal time i'll just show you us putting this in but all we're doing now is this is all glued all screwed we've then put some packers um i'd allow 10 mil it's ended up being about four um you know, they, well, there we go. I know 10 mil bigger. I've got four mil to play with. So all I've done is I've put packers under here. I've put little tiny packers under there. I've put little packers under here just to set it all level. All I'm going to do now, concrete screws. I'm going to go under here in the dark and screw that all the way down there. I'll get a few in under there and under there as well. Get that done. 
Um, and we are finished. All I'll have to do then is, I'm gonna get some foam as well. Some of the stuff we got from Bondit, I think. I'll use some of that. Uh, I'll get some of that in. And then we'll fill up that little six mil gap, I think it is, all up there. We'll fill that. Uh, and then that can be packed. And then I'll foam under the under here as well as I go. So we've got foam top and bottom, all solid. Last thing for me to do then is, but not today, is just get some timber and fill that in, that gap. About 30 mil, nice even gap there, which is nice and tidy. And then fill that gap in up there as well. Um, where are we? Yes, that gap there, that one there. I'll fill that in and then it can all be uh, plasterboarded and what have you. But I think what we're gonna do, we've agreed today, I'm mad about this bit, is we're gonna stud, we think, from here now, all the way down, yeah. bring a stud out to bring it level with here and pull that, that over a little bit. Let me just pull this out. We're gonna come over so it's flush with this and then plaster this in. So when we do put any cupboards or anything here, we can do that. That's the plan. So all Matt's doing now is he's putting these, um, these glue blocks on under there. So we're just using some sticks like um, a good, a good uh, wadge of it and then sort of rubbing it into place. Uh, and that will do it as demonstrated. A little bit on there, a little bit on there. And then just uh, like that, a good rub into there to hold it. And that's it with the amount of glues and screws and everything anyway. That's beautiful. There we are. So we're doing that all, all the way up, all these, look, glued all the way onto this, this lot here, because all the rest of these, as I said, have been put on prior to arrival, prior to delivery. So we'll finish that, get this all concrete screwed in, clean up, and we're done for today, aren't we? Matt was having a half day today, after doing what he'd done. And look, he's still here. Anyway, <coughs> all for the love, man, all for the love. Eat, eat sleeping please. Yeah. Nice one. Right, let's get finished then. This is all finished. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that I, sh I should keep to myself through, but this is actually a few days later because I forgot to film this bit. So here we are. This foam has all gone off solid. Well, quite good. I, was, I think you saw me put that in. I, I uh, told you I was going to put it in, which I have. That there was just a bit of packer to pack through to allow us to screw into there. Foamed all the way up there, all the way up the top there to fill all the cavity in. That's nice and solid. Just gonna cut these pegs off. I've gotta put one more upright in here, even and a, and a header, even though it's we know it's not doing anything because it's as it is. None of the other other stairs have got this part in, but that's just to allow us to plasterboard if I put a piece in there. You can see we foamed underneath, and you can see we've got a concrete fixing in every hole all the way down. I say every hole, under every riser. Um, there isn't one behind there because this is supported with this, that is screwed into there and glued and it's um, angle cut to the same rake as that. I've fixed under there, which you may just be able to see, and I have fixed, let me just get my camera in, I have fixed, no you can't see, you just need to take my word for it, I've fixed under there as well. The only one that's not fixed is this last one, um, but I'm happy that that is solid anyway. So there we are, it's important to make sure you fix your stairs well, Plenty packers, I can't suggest strong enough to fill it full of a good quality foam as well. Just, it, it's especially this stuff that we've got. Um, it's actually more like an adhesive rather than a, a foam filling. Um, and it just, when it goes off, it, it just makes it quite, quite solid. Um, and then concrete fixings are always good as well. Every one, I mean, these are 120 mil concrete fixings in there. So I've got a good sort of three inches into the wall at least. And it just means that when you walk up your stairs, there's no bounce and there's no chance of any creaks. So all I've already got to do now is fill that void in there, which I shall do when we start tacking and, and finishing all this off. I've got this to do, which I shall cut in around here. Sorry for the light, it's a bit rubbish. Um, yeah, just got to cut round here, in, round the posts and everything. That'll all be glued. And as I mentioned, I shan't touch anything. I should just stick it down, screw it, and then either stick slide or foam fill around it to fill the void and cut it off so you can't get any squeaks at the top of your stairs. So this is all done. We are act actually here doing something else. And if you can just erase the acro there. So that is going to be for another day. But there we are. That's it then. So that's the end of this episode then. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and if you've watched all four parts, thank you very much for that first of all. 
and I hope you've enjoyed all of them and you may have got something from them um, albeit you just enjoy watching even if you didn't get any uh, tips on how to do it yourself but uh, if you have got any questions as always put it in the comments or contact us on our email which is in the bio thank you very much for watching as always we really appreciate it and we will see you on the next one